Okay. Uh, here's another problem. This one's kind of interesting. Um, so this is another axial elongation problem, but uh, you have to be careful on this. You cannot use PL over AE on this one, all right? In this problem, they want to find the uh, total elongation, the displacement at A, when the rod has a uniformly distributed force. So there, there's two ways to kind of think of this. One, you can, the classic way to think of this is it's hanging under gravity. So there's a gravitational load pulling it down. Or some other way, maybe there's a pulling traction on it that applies a constant load for each length. The problem we have here, why you can't use PL over AE, is at every section there is a changing reaction force. The internal reaction force in this element changes with respect to position continuously. It's actually a linear varying function. Uh, you can see that pretty easily. If we look at the section from here to here, okay, to this cut, the total force acting on it is the 30 kilonewtons per meter times this length. Whereas if you look at this section, at this point, it's the same 30 kilonewtons per meter, but over a longer length. So depending upon, as you go out further, make this cut further and further, the uh, reaction force becomes uh, greater, okay? Or, okay. So how do we handle that? Well, we'll have to go back and do the actual integral on this one, okay? All right. What's going on here? Zoom out. There we go. So this is problem um, F4-5 in Hibbler. All right. So this one I can draw. This one's pretty easy to draw. It's fixed at this side, but we have this uniform traction. Okay, of 30 kilonewtons per meter. The total length is um, 900 millimeters. And it's aluminum, and the diameter is um, 20 millimeters. Okay, it's aluminum. So E is the 73.1 gigapascals, right? All right. Um, so how do we do this? Well, as I mentioned before, PL on AE only works when all these parameters are constant. So when P is constant, or A is constant, or E is constant, we can use this equation to get the total elongation. But in this case, P is not a constant, so this equation does not work. Okay? We can't use that. You have to go back to the original definition when I derived it in class, and we found that the displacement at some point x Let's uh, let's call x this way. Let's do x. Should we define x that way? Yeah, let's do it. Let's make it simple. We'll make we'll make x go actually the backwards direction for this problem just to make it a little easier. Um, should I do that? Which way should I do it? Yeah, we'll make it go that way. Obviously, you can do it either way. I'm just trying to think. It's good to see it reverse direction, even though I almost always drew it, draw it to the right. It doesn't matter. You can draw it to the right as well. So this is the integral of the strain, okay, from zero 
two x, and we have to use a dummy variable integration here. Okay. All right. So this is the general equation. Or if you want to get the elongation, which is the displacement at the length, that's the integral from zero to l of the strain. All right. So that's the equation we're going to use. Okay. So what's the free body diagram? Well, uh, well, okay. So the strain is the stress over Young's modulus. Okay. Young's modulus is constant. And then we can define the stress as the internal reaction force over the cross-sectional area, which is also constant. Okay. So A is constant in this problem, all right? But this is what varies, okay? That's what changes with position, okay? That's why we have to do the integral. So we need to get that. How do we figure that out? Well, let's put a, let's draw a, a section, okay? Not at a particular point, but at some general point, a distance x from um, the right-hand side. Uh, well, let's do it from the other way. Let's do it this way. Let's actually do it from... So I don't have to deal with the reaction force, okay? So if this is x, then this distance here is L minus X, okay? I'm just using the left-hand side. Um, here is the internal reaction force, okay? It's a function of position, positive tension, and then we have the distributive force acting along this length here. So the total distributive force acting on this is the 30 kilonewtons per meter times the length. In this case, it's acting on this length L minus X. All right? So that's the total force. So if I do sum of forces in the X, I get NX equals 30 L minus X kilonewtons per meter. And, and I know L. I should have put that in here. L is um, 0.9 meters. So again, we have X. And when we solve for this, you know, for X, it will turn out to be meters. All right? Okay. So that is the internal uh, axial reaction force. So if you were to plot it, what you can see here is, you know, at the very tip, right, at point A, it goes to zero. All right, so if we were to plot here, end of X, and here's X. I'm drawing it a little backwards. I'm drawing it. So this is X equal to zero, and this is X equal to L. So this is as drawn on the beam. I probably should have put it. Okay, let's make it look a little better. Here's N of X, right? Then at this point it's zero, and it varies linearly because of the X until you get to the point here where it's it's maximal. This is the 30 times L because X equals zero. So that is the um, twenty-seven kilonewtons, okay? And then it goes to zero at x equals to L, all right? That's the distribution of the internal reaction force. So it's zero at the tip, and it increases when you get the root. It's maximal at the root, okay? All right, so to get the total integral, now that we have this, we can put it into this relationship. Right? 
so this becomes like the AE are constant, so I can pull those out. Uh, A is uh, the pi on 4 diameter squared, so 0 0.02 meters squared times E, which is the 73.1 times 10 to the 9th pascals times the integral from 0 to point nine meters of n of x, which is 30, well I can take 30 out, right? Take 30 out. And that just becomes 0 0.9 meters minus x dx. That becomes the integral. I should put the units out here. Kilonewtons per meter. Okay? So let's evaluate that. get it on the screen. There we go. Okay. All right. Let's first get this whole big mess in front, calculate that, get one number out of it. So I got 30 divided by the 73.1 to the ninth. And the cross-sectional area is 0 0.02. So this cross-sectional area here, just to, so you can follow, is 0 0.0003. Whoops, I should put here. And zero zero three zeros, and then a three. One four times ten to the oh, one second. And that's meters squared. Okay. All right. Uh, So this gives me out front that, delta equals 1.306 times 10 to the minus 6. And now the units of that are going to be, I've got, uh, well, kilonewtons on top of meters squared. Uh, and then I've got a Newton meter squared, so the meter squares cancel out. The, I get a thousand here. The Newtons cancel out. Ah, this is a meter, so I get I keep a meter on top. Um, wait, no, I keep a meter on the bottom, right? Because I have a meter squared on the bottom. Where do I get a meter cube? Ah, I'm sorry. Kilonewtons, let me be more careful, over meter, okay, kilonewton per meter. Then I get on the bottom a meter squared. And then for the Pascal, I get a newton per meter squared. So these guys cancel out. This cancels out. I get a thousand up here. So this becomes delta. Okay. So this number here excuse me for this big mess, turns out to be 1.306 times 10 to the minus third, 1 over a meter. And then I have the integral, okay? So I didn't write the integral route. But then next to this, we get the integral from 0 to 0.9 meters of 0.9 meters minus x dx. And so you can see um, what I'll get here is a meter squared of the units, and then that'll give me uh, units of meters. Okay. Okay. So let's finish the integral here. Um, so when we do the antiderivative on this, I get the one point three zero six times ten to the minus three. This is on 1 over meters. This is the total elongation. And then the antiderivative of this is 0.9 meters times x minus 1 half x squared. 
we have to go from 0 meters to 0.9 meters. Okay? And then when we do that, this becomes squared, uh, basically minus one half of that, so it's two divided. So this becomes 0 0.405 meters squared, multiplying by that. I now get 5.29 times 10 to the minus 7 meters, or delta equals um, 5.29 times 10 to the minus fourth millimeters. Okay? You might want to double check the integration. Actually, I'll, sh I'll probably do another video where I show you how we can solve this integral in Mathematica. Okay? All right. Thank <laughs> you.